happens during a synthesis reaction. We use the formula A plus B yields AB to represent a synthesis reaction. There are three main types of synthesis reactions. Firstly, two elements forming a binary compound. Secondly, an element in a compound forming a new compound. And thirdly, two compounds forming a new compound. There are three different ways that two elements can form a binary compound. A monovalent metal reacts with a nonmetal to form an ionic compound. A multivalent metal reacts with a nonmetal to form various ionic compounds, and two nonmetals combine to form a molecular compound. Firstly, a monovalent metal reacts with a nonmetal to form an ionic compound. During this reaction, there is a transfer of electrons. A metal that is monovalent means that it has one set charge, as opposed to a multivalent metal. For example, sodium is monovalent because it only has a charge of positive 1, while copper is multivalent because it can have a charge of either positive 1 or positive 2. An example of a monovalent metal reacting with a nonmetal to form an ionic compound is sodium plus chlorine yields sodium chloride. If you are unsure as to how we balance the equation or why the elements have certain states, make sure to check out our other videos, Balancing Chemical Equations and How to Figure Out the States of an Element or Compound. Secondly, a multivalent metal reacts with a nonmetal to form various ionic compounds. For example, copper plus chlorine yields copper 1 chloride, and copper plus chlorine yields copper 2 chloride. This is because copper, as we mentioned, is multivalent. Copper has a charge of positive 1 and positive 2, therefore yielding two different results. Thirdly, two nonmetals combine to form a molecular compound. For example, carbon plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide, and carbon plus oxygen yields carbon monoxide. They are both nonmetals, and carbon is multivalent, so they form molecular compounds. Next, an element and compound forming a new compound. There are two different ways that it can occur. Any element and any compound forming a new compound and a metal chloride plus oxygen gas yields a metal chlorate. An example of an element and compound forming a new compound is phosphorus trichloride plus chlorine gas yields phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus trichloride is our compound and chlorine gas is our element and phosphorus pentachloride is our new compound. An example of a metal chloride plus oxygen yields a metal chlorate is sodium chloride plus oxygen gas yields sodium chlorate. Sodium chloride is our metal chloride and oxygen gas is oxygen and sodium chlorate is our metal chlorate. Finally, two compounds forming a new compound. There are three different ways that two compounds can form a new compound. A metal oxide plus water yields a metal hydroxide, a nonmetal oxide plus water yields a nonmetal oxy acid, and a metal oxide plus carbon dioxide yields a metal carbonate. Firstly, a metal oxide plus water yields a metal hydroxide. For example, sodium oxide plus water yields sodium hydroxide. The metal oxide is sodium oxide, and H2O is the water, and it yields sodium hydroxide, which is the metal hydroxide. Secondly, a nonmetal oxide plus water yields a nonmetal oxy acid. For example, carbon dioxide plus water yields carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide is our nonmetal oxide, and H2O is water, and it yields carbonic acid, which is the nonmetal oxy acid. Finally, a metal oxide plus carbon dioxide yields a metal carbonate. For example, sodium oxide plus carbon dioxide yields sodium carbonate. Sodium oxide is our metal oxide and CO2 is carbon dioxide and it yields sodium carbonate which is our metal carbonate. And that's synthesis reactions explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next. Happens during a decomposition reaction. During this reaction, a compound breaks down into two elements or compounds, and we use the formula AB yields A plus B to represent it. There are six types of decomposition reactions. Firstly, a binary compound decomposes into its elements. Heat and electric currents are often used to break down compounds. For example, sodium chloride breaks down into sodium plus chlorine. Secondly, decomposition of a metal carbonate. Metal carbonates decompose into carbon dioxide and a metal oxide. 
For example, barium carbonate breaks down into carbon dioxide and barium oxide. Thirdly, decomposition of a metal nitrate. Metal nitrates decompose into a metal nitrite and oxygen. For example, sodium nitrate breaks down into sodium nitrite and oxygen. Fourthly, decomposition of a metal chlorate. Metal chlorates decompose into a metal chloride and oxygen. For example, magnesium chlorate breaks down into magnesium chloride and oxygen. Fifthly, decomposition of a metal hydroxide. Metal hydroxides decompose into metal oxides and water. For example, potassium hydroxide breaks down into potassium oxide and water. Sixthly, decomposition of a nonmetal oxyacid. Nonmetal oxyacids decompose into a nonmetal oxide and water. For example, nitric acid breaks down into dinitrogen pentoxide and water. And that's decomposition reactions explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos. Don't forget to press the notification bell. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next. What is a single displacement reaction? During a single displacement reaction, one element takes the place of another element in a compound. This reaction is represented by the formula A plus BC yields BC plus AC. An analogy that we can use to remember this type of reaction is the best friend analogy. Angela sadly has no friends. Sarah and Vanessa are best friends. Sarah decides that she doesn't want to be friends with Vanessa anymore, but that's okay because Angela wants to be Vanessa's friend. Angela represents our element because she took our other element, Sarah's place, in the compound, which is their friendship. There are four types of single displacement reactions. Firstly, we have a metal displacing another metal in an ionic compound. Only elements that are more reactive are able to displace elements that are less reactive. For example, iron can displace copper because iron is the more reactive element out of the two. But copper cannot displace iron because copper is the less reactive element out of the two. An example of this would be magnesium plus lead nitrate yields lead plus magnesium nitrate. Magnesium took lead's place. Secondly, we have a metal displacing hydrogen from an acid. Hydrogen acts like the metal that is being displaced. An example would be magnesium plus hydrochloric acid yields magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. Thirdly, we have a metal displacing hydrogen from water. Only very reactive metals can displace hydrogen from water. An example would be sodium plus water yields sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Finally, we have a nonmetal displacing another nonmetal from an ionic compound. When a diatomic halogen reacts with an ionic compound, the halogen in the compound gets replaced. For example, chlorine plus sodium bromide yields sodium chloride plus bromine. And that single displacement reaction is explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos. And don't forget to press the notification bell. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next. What is a double displacement reaction? During this reaction, the cations in two different ionic compounds exchange places, forming two new ionic compounds. This reaction is represented by the formula AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. A great analogy to help remember this reaction is a basketball analogy. We can relate this to basketball players and teams. DeRozan used to play for the Raptors and Kawhi used to play for the Spurs. DeRozan and Kawhi are our cations because they ended up switching places. In 2018, Kawhi played for the Raptors while DeRozan played for the Spurs. There are four types of double displacement reactions. Firstly, we have a double displacement reaction that forms a solid. The solid in this reaction is usually a solid precipitate. An example of this reaction would be sodium chloride plus silver nitrate yields sodium nitrate plus silver chloride. As you can see, sodium and silver are our cations because they swapped places. The solid precipitate that was formed in this reaction was sodium chloride. If you are not sure how we figured out the state of sodium chloride, make sure to check out our video called How to Figure Out the State of an Element or Compound. Secondly, we have double displacement reactions that form a gas. During this reaction, one product quickly decomposes into water and gas. 
An example of this reaction would be acetic acid plus sodium bicarbonate yields sodium acetate plus carbonic acid, but we're not done. As we mentioned, it also needs to break down into water and a gas, so we will further break down carbonic acid into water and carbon dioxide, giving us our final equation. Here's another example of a reaction that decomposes into water and a gas. Ammonium chloride plus sodium hydroxide yields sodium chloride plus ammonium hydroxide. Again, we're not done yet. Ammonium hydroxide breaks down into water and ammonia gas. This gives us our final equation. Thirdly, we have a double displacement reaction that is also considered a neutralization reaction. In this reaction, an acid is added to a base to yield water and salt. An example of this reaction would be sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide yields water and potassium sulfate. The acid in this reaction is sulfuric acid and the base is potassium hydroxide. They yield water and potassium sulfate, which is the salt. Lastly, we have double displacement reactions that have no reaction. If the two products formed are both soluble, meaning they're both aqueous, then there is no reaction. For example, sodium hydroxide plus potassium chloride yields potassium hydroxide plus sodium chloride. But, since potassium hydroxide and sodium chloride are both aqueous, there is no reaction. And that's double displacement reactions explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos. And don't forget to press the notification bell. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next. What are combustion reactions? A combustion reaction occurs when oxygen combines with a hydrocarbon to produce one or more oxides and water vapor. Combustion reactions release energy in the form of heat and light. Here is an analogy to help you remember the formation of combustion reactions. Sally and George are friends, and Ashley is alone. Ashley decides that she wants to become friends with Sally and George, but she does not want Sally and George to stay friends, so she splits them up and spends time with both of them. There are two types of combustion reactions. First, we have complete combustion. This occurs when a sufficient amount of oxygen is present. A blue flame color indicates that a complete combustion reaction is occurring. For example, ethane gas plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide plus water vapor. A key thing to remember is that when water is produced during a combustion reaction, it is produced in gas form. It becomes water vapor. It is not a liquid. If you want to know how to balance combustion reactions, go check out our balancing chemical equations video. Secondly, we have incomplete combustion. This occurs when an insufficient amount of oxygen is present. A yellow flame color indicates that an incomplete combustion reaction is occurring. The products of this reaction are not just carbon dioxide and water vapor. It can produce carbon monoxide and carbon, which is also known as soot. Soot is hazardous when inhaled. Combustion reactions involve other compounds too. For example, magnesium combines with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. And that's combustion reactions explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos. And don't forget to press the notification bell. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next.